general relativity, step by step. I've been talking about the Bianchi identities and I've reduced down the, um, I guess the left hand side of the Bianchi identities down to this form here, evaluated in a local inertial frame, which is my elevator frame. That's me in an elevator. Right, well everything's going to, well it's better cancel out to zero or I'm in trouble. And so is Bianchi. Let me go to red. Just a minute. Red for cancelling. Right, that's got to cancel with something. What's it? Let, I've, I've obscured the... Uh, I've obscured... There we go. Let's do it more carefully. What does that cancel with? Well, that's got to cancel with a new and an alpha. So I'm just going to look through my terms until I see a new and an alpha to cancel it with. Oh, here it is. Now, the fact is this one here. It cancels, although you'll notice that the differentiation's in a different order. Mu, beta, sigma, and here it's sigma, beta, mu. But it doesn't matter because the order of differentiation, of ordinary differentiation, doesn't matter. Well, that's nice. Let's work on the next one. That's going to cancel with something. It's going to cancel with g nu beta. Oh, here it is. There. Mu alpha sigma, mu alpha sigma. And also you'll note in this cancellation the order of the indices on the metric tensor. Here it's nu beta, here it's beta nu. But it doesn't matter because the metric tensor is symmetric, or at least we can always make it symmetric. Well, let's just hope we can cancel the others. Mu alpha. There. Beta mu. What have we got left now? There. Should get easier as I'm cancelling because there's fewer terms to check. Uh, sigma alpha. There. And hopefully this one, beta, sigma, yeah, that cancels. Right, so the Bianchi identities, Bianchi identities, have been uh, demonstrated. And I'm going to write. Uh, yes, sorry, I'm, I'm going to write those Bianchi identities out again because I like them so much. I'll. I'm, I'm, I know I'm making heavy weather of this, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to use the comma goes to semicolon rule explicitly. We've got the Riemann Christoffel tensor alpha, beta, mu, nu. Let me show you what I have demonstrated. Comma sigma plus r. Alpha and beta stay the same. Everything goes to one step to the right. So it's something mu comma everything goes one to the, to the right and the sigma must go in there plus r alpha and beta are in the same position and everything goes one step to the right again so it's new sigma comma mu equals zero and we've established that this is true in a local inertial frame an lif an elevator framework an elevator coordinate system and because that is a valid tensor equation we can replace the commas with semicolons and these are known as the Bianchi identities notice there's quite a lot of meat on this because alpha equals 0 1 2 3 there's four separate components for it beta has also got four um, four components, that can be 0, 1, 2 or 3. And of course mu and nu and sigma are also 0, 1, 2 or 3. So altogether we can plug different values into this and we can get 4 to the power 5 distinct um, equations out of this uh, 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 out of this system of identities. But because of the, because of the uh, symmetries which we've identified earlier, here they are, because of these symmetries that we identified earlier, uh, we don't really have that much information uh, in terms of independent sets of uh, equations. Even so, the Bianchi identities are very, very useful. And what we're going to do now is to try and use them for the Einstein. This is why they're important. They're important because it allows us to, well, it gives us a, a key piece of information to put the Einstein field equations together. Okay, I'm going to stop there. Those are the Bianchi identities. Stop.